welcome back for most people, I think. I'm Paul Lindley, and I'm the founder of Ellis Kitchen, which is the UK's biggest baby food business. But I'm equally proud to be both an ambassador to the British Library's Business and IP Centre and to be the chair of Toast Ale, who we're going to hear uh, much about in the next 30 minutes. Uh, I'm delighted to join you today as, as part of this Startup 2020 uh, Summit. And I know many of you have been here since 9.30 this morning, and I hope that it's been valuable. And I hope especially that the next 30 minutes can add to your takeaways, to your learnings, and your confidence in what you're doing. Now, in this session, we're going to get to hear from Louisa Zayan, my wonderful colleague uh, and friend and a brilliant entrepreneur. So, hi, Louisa. Hi, Paul. Hi, Great uh, to be here. Good. Let me share a little bit about you before, um, before we kick off and, and get to hear what you've been up to the last few years. So Louisa set up um, Toast Ale in 2015 with Rob Wilson and the environmental campaigner and author Tristram Stewart. Uh, Toast Ale creates delicious craft beers uh, from surplus fresh bread and Louisa is its chief operating officer. So she manages the company's commitment to people, planet and profit and ensures that the brand is true to its purpose, which is to end food waste over a cheeky pint. She's a certified management accountant with a background in sustainability, consulting and marketing. And she's passionate about social enterprise, especially the circular economy and the B Corporation movement. So I'll get into a little bit about that. And I also know that she's very worried that I'm gonna go over all mini Andrew Neil with her and be ruthlessly forensic <laughs> in this interview, uh, but I'm not. Uh, I'm here just to allow her to share her stories and learnings and together, hopefully we can pass on some of the things that we think might be helpful to, to this audience who may be thinking about or have recently started uh, your business. So again, welcome, welcome, Louisa. Thank you. So I, I thought, you know, as you, Louisa, know, I thought I'd start with a question that I always start with whenever I'm talking to anybody about business, and that's the main question of why. I think it's fundamental to business, and I think it's fundamental to life, actually. Understanding a person's why helps us understand their motivation, their perspective, and the decisions that they're likely to make. So my first question to you is, why did you found Toastale? Why did you believe it would make a difference? And why do you think it's gonna be successful? So I have been what I would call an environmentalist all my life. I've always had a very deep connection to the natural world. Um, but my career route had taken me in a rather different direction. I studied law, as you said, I trained as a management accountant um, and gone into consulting and was working in um, very sort of traditional professional roles it, that didn't connect with me, connect with my heartstrings, connect with my personal values. And so I think I, I didn't have that personal um, um good feeling from the work that I was doing um it was taking a year out traveling in South America um seeing firsthand some of um the issues that were starting to be talked about in the media more around deforestation and climate change this was back in 2008 and coming back from that trip and realizing that I really had to align my professional life with my personal beliefs um, I'd met Tristram Stewart, um, who you mentioned that we both know, um, who has always been a big inspiration to me. He's um, been a campaigner all of his life from the environmental and social perspective, working on the food system. He had uh, been in Brussels and he tried this really delicious tasting beer that had been made with surplus bread from a local bakery. And he'd joined those dots of the fact that huge amounts of bread are being wasted all over the world, um, that the craft beer industry was booming um, and that there are a lot of people that really want to be acting for change. And he saw that there was an opportunity there for us to create something really special. Um, so I was the first one on board to say, this is absolutely right for me. Um, it aligns perfectly with my personal values and, and my beliefs in how we can use the business um, to deliver social and environmental change. And I think um, 
from a food perspective, it was really important. Food production is the biggest impact that humans have on the planet, um, from deforestation to fresh water use. Um, it's the biggest driver of deforestation and um, is, is causing a huge loss of biodiversity. Um, and yet by tackling food waste, we can have a real big impact on that environmental damage that we're having because we're wasting a third of all of the food that we produce. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's a positive way of getting people to act on what is a big scary problem, which I just thought was excellent. It was um, a way of not preaching to people about lifestyle changes that they had to make or asking them to do anything that was particularly difficult um, but simply if we can get individuals, businesses, industry to be wasting less food, um, we can really tackle one of the biggest environmental problems that we face. So, um, it, yeah, it felt like a complete no brainer to go to go with that. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's so insightful, Louisa, because, you know, like everybody watching and listening you just you just hold a very personal story with a set of values where you found something that overlapped with those values and excited you to to go into the unknown. And you know stories um, are so vital in uh, in business, authentic stories. Um, and they 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 kind of explain um, uh, a motivation in, in in a very lived experience way. And I think. Business is really all about people um, when you come down to it. And, and everybody watching will have that very different story. We've all got a unique story about why we're led us to do what we're doing. And, and understanding people, therefore, is vital for success in business, I think. I think too often it's like there's a spreadsheet, the numbers add up, and it's about the economics. The economics never work unless you've got people motivated to make the business plan a reality. You've got trust that people will buy from you or the trust of people to buy from you. And I'm reminded, Tristram actually shared with us, I know a couple of years ago, um, something that I, I speak about often. And that is, when you look at the word company, it's sort of groups are in the Latin word common panis, which is with bread. It's about people coming together. That's, what, that's how companies form, people with aligned interests, aligned appetite to risk, an aligned adventure that they want to go on and, uh, and to create things. And, um, you know, it's from the same, same set of words as companions. So it's about people. That's what business is about people. And I know when I started uh, Ella's Kitchen, um, I, I had this mission, this vision of what I wanted to do with the business, but I knew to, to make it succeed, I had to build the values that I had into the business, not just be my values. And I had to create a, an environment where a culture thrived, not because I said this is the culture, but because the people that working there believed in the mission, believed that it was the type of work that they were being rewarded for emotionally as well as financially and felt empowered to do. So starting with, with that of businesses around people, I, I sort of wanted to ask you to, around two unique human traits, if you like, that define people and how you've tackled that at Toast. One of them is around this fantastic ability we have as human beings to to imagine things that don't exist and have an idea of how to make them exist and then how work with the wherewithal to work with others, work with creativity and trial and error to create something. Which in our world in business is innovation. And we all need to do that, whether it's a new product or service or just a new way of doing, doing things um, better. So I have a question around how did Toast approach innovation? Um, but the second human trait is really around trust. It's unique to human beings. Again, we know when we've got it. We definitely know when we've lost it. It can take years to repair, and it's vital to to anything in business. And so, Toast as a consumer brand, that trust with consumers that they are going to get a delicious beer, and what you say about the the, the, the values and the the impact that the business can create is true. They've got to believe that. So, so how does Toast ingrain people into its its very being? How does it approach innovation and and the trust question? Mm. Um, from an innovation perspective, I'd say um, from the very outset at Toast, we have had a clear future goal. We have been very clear about what we're trying to achieve, why the business was set up to tackle food waste. Um, and the people that we've brought into the business have shared um, a similar belief in the mission of the business. Um, having, I think, that, that true north has given us direction. 
Um, it's enabled us to develop a strategy as to how we're going to get there. But as you said, it's not about creating a formula and created a, creating a rigid plan as to the road, roadmap to achieve that. Um, what has been key for us is to be flexible, uh, which is easier to do if you have your plan um, and then you adapt to both new opportunities and, and new challenges. Um, so we've made sure that we're always able to adapt. Um, we've had that experience very recently with, with the pandemic, obviously, and having to completely change the business. Um, and even in those circumstances, finding ways not just to deal with some of the commercial challenges that we're maybe having but remembering what our overarching mission is um, for the business and how do we adapt the business both um, to survive commercially and thrive commercially but also to keep us on that route um, to use a, a term that you use a lot Paul, that big hairy audacious goal um, which I know Ella's um, and it would be great to hear about how you set that up I think um, because it's inspired us a lot having a really uh, what can feel like overly ambitious goal but um, with a you know a, a strategy of how we're going to achieve that um, and being open to conversations um, from various different sources I think this is there's a um, you know real importance of diversity in opinion and voice to bring that into the business um, we have worked a lot with um, many different types of organizations including a lot of universities and brought in a lot of young people um, to help us think about how we move towards the future because it's their generation that we will we're working for ultimately um, people now but also them in the future and so it's really important that we think about um, what you know how we create a better future for them but also what is life like for them and how how do, do we adapt um, to that so I think really important to hear lots of different voices um, and particularly where they don't align with you because there is that danger that you end up in somewhat of a bubble um, and uh, yeah you can plow on without um, without challenge so you know also having a board level in your team and with external influence to have people that, that will challenge you to keep thinking differently um, I'll say also that um, looking after the team's mental health has been really important when you're in a position where everybody is overstretched and exhausted that's when you lose the ability to come up with creative solutions to problems so not only from the perspective of caring about our team, but also for the benefit of the business, it's been really important for us to put time into looking after everybody's mental health. Um, and then to the second point, you talked about trust. Um, I agree, absolutely important and really fundamental to what we believe um, at Toast. And um, it's one of the pillars of B Corp, the, the reasoning behind B Corp is um, all about transparency. Uh, we have strived to do the best that we can do as a business. Um, we both directly have an impact by using surplus bread as a circular economy business, um, indirectly by we open source a recipe. So we share that knowledge with others and then all of our profits go to charity as well to try uh, to deliver systemic change. Um, and then we try to be very open about what we're doing to influence the industry to demonstrate that this business model um, can uh, be translated to, to other businesses. Um, but we're not perfect. Even doing all of those things, there are still areas that we need to work on. Um, so we are very honest about uh, what those challenges are and what we're doing to address those. Um, and actually I've found that that transparency has been incredibly helpful. Uh, we are a certified B Corp and so we're part of a community of businesses um, that operate to a um, in a way that really supports each business within that community to achieve something that's bigger than all of us. We obviously all have our own uh, business missions and our commercial strategies, but ultimately we're all working to create a better planet for, um, for future generations as, as well as generations now. And some of those challenges that we face that we're not 
perfect on, there may be another company that has found a, you know, a fantastic solution uh, to those. So transparency, I think, in both in building trust, but in helping us to, to continue to improve as, as a business. Yeah, I, I think there's so much in there, actually, if we unpick a little bit, I'll come on to B Corps in a second, we'll delve a little bit into that. But um, you, you spoke about the importance of diversity, which, which is often seen as the, the vitally important um, thing of inclusion and equity. And, uh, but, but the different opinions around the table and an entrepreneur starting a business who has a, often a very set view of where that business is going, but being open to listening to the team that they collate of which should have different opinions, definitely should have different skill sets, should have a, a similar mindset, but, but feel as though there's a culture where you can express dissent or another way of doing things or a different idea. Uh, and, um, and you know, we, we, uh, every business is interdependent within the business of the, the quality of the team and, and, and um, but outside of the business with the, with the balance between all the different stakeholders of that business. So I think that was uh, really vital. You talked about adapting quite a few times. And, you know, I reflect that, um, you know, Darwin with his theory of, evolution didn't say that it's the fastest that, that win or that the biggest that win it's those that adapt most quickly to their environment that win and my goodness we've had to adapt so many of us this year to the different environments that no one saw coming and don't know really what next year will be bring and you know toast with a business where hospitality and the on-trade is such an important part of the business has really had to pivot and, and um uh, and uh, try and uh, adapt to, to the refined environment. Um, you asked about Ella's Kitchen. Well, you know, I, I, I tried to build Ella's from a very simple and, and, and unique mission, which was to improve children's lives by developing healthier relationships with food and start from that very spot. The big hairy goal was that we aim to get 1 billion, what we call tiny tummy touch points um, from, from the beginning, which is basically a billion portions of organic fruit and vegetables and um, every month we had the same cadence of we'd look how we were doing, the whole team would share in a visual way with, with the caps of the product um, in, in Perspex tubes, how we were doing according to that. And it took 11 years and we did. We, we, we've served 1 billion uh, portions of fruits and vegetables to children. And I, I know um, obviously Toast's mission and it's equally hairy and audacious and we all will get there. So setting those big things is important as long as you can bring them back to the day to day and understand what you've got to do tomorrow to be able to achieve um, that long-term ambition. Um, so I just wanted to get into B Corps because many people won't have heard what B Corporations are. Many people, if they're thinking about starting a business or just started, maybe thinking less of, you know, what's its purpose and mission, those things we've just been talking about, and more about its business plan and how is it going to get sustainable in its revenue stream and, and build from there, which is, which is obviously vitally important as well. But um, we've discovered the B Corporation movement and the B Corporation certification as a way of validating our mission and, and incorporating the way we think business should operate into our businesses so that it's within the constitution of the business effectively with its articles. Um, you know, and, and we strive to almost redefine what success is in business by, by using business as a force for good and believing that if we can do good with our business, we will do good for our business and make more profits in the long term. So I, I wonder if you could just like shed light a little bit um, to help people maybe look up and, and look into B Corporation status and, and, um, and, and the accreditation process and what it's done for you and the community that you find yourself in um, uh, as Tosa within the B Corp um, movement. Yeah. Uh, bit, well, B Corps are businesses that have met a minimum standard of social and environmental responsibility, accountability, and transparency. Um, and have also, as you mentioned, changed their articles of association. So they have made a, a legal commitment to people and the planet. Um, there are some really big famous organisations like Patagonia and Ben & Jerry's, um, more recent ones in, in the UK from consumer brand perspective um, as well, um, like the Body Shop, um, sort of ASOP uh, quite recently as well. Um, but at the moment, I'm, I think, you know, daily there's a new B Corp certified, or certified. obviously Ella, Ella's has been a B Corp for a, a long time as well. Um, and um, for us, it was really important um, because um, although we had a very clear uh, mission um, and environmental stance for the business, um, we, I guess there were other elements of our business that we were unsure as to whether you know, we were 
we were doing the best that we could do. Um, one of the benefits of B Corp is that it looks right across your business um, from the governance structure at the top um, to the way you um, engage with your communities, uh, with your supply chain, with your customers, with your workers, um, and of course the environment, those, those five pillars. Um, and for us, when we looked at how we were doing um, from the workers' perspective, there was so much that we could do to improve and to become better as an organization. Um, and the way that we learned that was by um, completing what is um, a very fairly simple impact assessment online. Uh, it's free to do for all businesses. Um, so you, yeah, you can go uh, to B Corp um, and complete that assessment in probably depending on how much knowledge you have of the entire business, um, a couple of hours that will give you um, a very broad benchmark of where you sit against all businesses that have completed the impact assessment. Um, and then you can identify in which of those areas you are performing strongly and, and which um, you need to still improve on. And then if you decide to, you can go through the certification route, um, but the initial impact assessment is free. So anybody um, can try it out with their, with their own business today. Um, for me, certification is the biggest um, benefit though, because you are, like I say, you're joining a community of businesses. Um, there are several working groups of B Corps um, that are very active, um, particularly at the moment, as we're working in the lead up to COP26 uh, um, in, in November next year, the UN Climate Change Conference. Uh, we're very actively working together as a community to set ambitious goals and a, a roadmap to, to achieve those. Brilliant, thank you. Well. I know even if sort of external impact of your business isn't the primary thing of, of, of somebody sitting and thinking about starting or starting a business, I cannot think of a business where good governance doesn't improve the chances of your business working uh, for you. And that's what that B Corporation certification certainly does, um, as well as all the other things that, frankly, we, we should be thinking about as, as global citizens, as well as business people. Um, and, uh, and I think all that plays back to the trust we were just talking about um, from our consumers and, uh, and customers um, in our business. Um, so we touched on the fact that this year has been uh, so challenging and so unexpected um, for all of us. Those of us that started businesses before this year would have had business plans that have been uh, adapted put it mildly, um, from this. Those of us that are thinking or have started businesses or thinking about starting businesses this year may have um, uh, become uh, disillusioned or worried or kind of thinking, uh, what have I done? Now, I, I just wanted to delve into Toast's experience this year. As, as I said earlier, so many of our customers have been um, affected directly either by the legislation or culture of not people wanting to go out. Um, so how has Toast taken the, all these challenges and sort of pivoted them to where we can exploit opportunity or we can pivot to, uh, to take new opportunities that come out of what the, the cards that we've all been dealt with? Mm, yeah, it's been a, a really difficult um, year and not just for our customers, for our supply chain as well. Um, one of our biggest suppliers of surplus bread um, went into administration and um, fairly early, um, you know, the food on the go market was um, obviously devastated. Um, for Toast, we have seen an, um, a huge impact on the business because restaurants, pubs and the events industry as well um, shut down overnight pretty much. And um, that was about 65% of our revenue. Um, and we immediately pivoted to be an e-commerce business or led by e-commerce um, with our retail partners, um, uh, Waitrose and Ocado and Co-op um, uh, supporting as, as well. Um, it has been a, um, an amazing experience actually to have that direct connection with our customers that we didn't really have before, um, to understand what the demand was and how we created a, um, a, a service offering as well as a product that met their needs to better understand what people wanted. Um, and then I guess um, from our perspective, there was also just um, the support that we got 
from our customers was really incredible, um, both in terms of the sales that um, that came in through our online shop, um, but just the messages um, uh, that were sent into us um, both by email and on, on social media as well. And I think um, people probably underestimate that, but a small business receiving a nice message when you're going through very challenging times really does mean a lot. Um, and it has meant we've reflected on um, how loyal and supportive our audience has been, um, which has you know, given us a lot of strength as well. But moreover than um, kind of the core business operations, we've looked back at what um, Toast was set up to do and um, what was happening to our community and how we could use our skills and our resources to support our communities better. So we set up something called a meal deal uh, where we directed the um, proceeds of our online shop to charities that were feeding people that were affected by the pandemic. Most of those charities we were already connected with. Um, Feedback is our main charity partner. Um, and we also worked with a big charity in central London called Food for All. And they are taking surplus food, taking even more surplus food once the restaurants had shut down and the supply chains were left uh, with, with no market for their products, um, cooking up meals and then getting those to people that that needed it. So we were able to fund over 46,000 meals um, over that first lockdown period. Um, but not only that, we had a small sales team and customer service team who unfortunately we had to furlough during the, that initial period. And we were concerned uh, about their mental health and the impact it would have on them. Most of them are quite a young team, you know, living in flats and, um, you know, not necessarily having um, connections um, because you know, the young people without families around. Um, and so we set up a connection between Food for All and our team. And our team went and volunteered uh, delivering some of those meals, which gave them an incredible purpose as well as um, supporting those charities. And I think that is illustrative of the team that yeah. we have and how aligned the values are to what we're trying to achieve yeah i mean i think what i've learned not just from you know the inspiration i've been able to see with toast but so many other businesses uh, that we read in the news that we some of us see they're involved with the importance of being decent as a business in these times as ever it is really important i remember a few years ago i um I was speaking to one of the chief executives of one of the world's leading sovereign wealth funds and, you know, massive, massive business. And I, I, I was sort of saying, well, what's your mission? How do you see your business? And he said, we, we're just, um, we, we try to be a decent business, making decent investment, treating people decently. And I thought, wow, the, the trillions of dollars that you've got to invest, that's how you see the world. And it brings it all back to people and doing the right thing uh, when, we, when we're challenged. So we're nearly out of time. I, I just thought I'd, I'd, I'd ask a, a sort of general question at the end, and that's any advice you've got for, for viewers from what you've learned from the last five years of the Toast journey, uh, and perhaps give us a reason to be optimistic or, or if you're starting a business and, and um, why Toast and the planet um, we can be optimistic for. <laughs> Um, uh, so I guess my advice is twofold. Uh, first of all, take on board all the advice and counsel that you can get. We, we are very fortunate to have you as our chair, Paul, and you know, to have so many uh, great people that we can reach out to. Um, there are, yeah, there are um, groups that you, you can contact for advice, but use personal networks and you know, just ask everybody for for thoughts um and advice um and, and yeah really i think there are a lot of people that are out there that are, are wanting to to help entrepreneurs um and then um i touched on it a few times about mental health i'd just say you know look after yourself don't overstretch yourself um i think um, when you're starting out in early days of business you can have really huge ambitions for what you want to achieve um, and feel the pressure to make you know to achieve those quickly so I'd just say you know manage that pace and ambition and think of this as a you know a long journey and not something that is is urgent um, and yeah so to really look after yourself um, and then in terms of being optimistic I would say that um, 
from an environmental perspective, there are a lot of people working on these issues. Um, you know, you said that business is about people. There are a lot of people and a growing number of people that care about these issues um, who will both be, you know, employees, your consumers, your suppliers. Um, and, you know, I'm very optimistic about what we can achieve if we take action. Um, and, um, yeah, I think that... Um, the, I certainly have hope anyway um, for the future. That, I mean, it constantly inspired by, by board meetings and by speaking to the whole team on the phone about how you really live what you, you know, you, you walk what you talk, you live what you believe, and that is uh, the momentum that can be carried through. Um, and that point of having a big hairy goal, but trying to pace yourself to get there so that your body and your mind can, and your team can go with you. but but celebrate those moments as you make that momentum on the way. So easy to do something great, forget about it because there's a problem coming. I think it's really important to celebrate those little moments that give you the confidence, internal confidence to keep, to keep going and going. Um, Louisa, thank you so much for sharing and being so open um, and uh, speaking about your learnings. Uh, I know that next week is a huge week at Toast. Uh, we launch a new campaign, there's a new beer coming out. Um, I'm going to leave you the last word in a minute to maybe just to speak about that. Uh, but thank you, because I know you've been really busy and, um, and, and good luck with next week. I hope we together have managed to share something of value in these last uh, 30 minutes. If nothing else, you'll know that through Toast, it is possible to have a beer with more taste and a world with less waste. And remember that food shouldn't be wasted, but neither should you. So please do drink responsibly. Please, please do try Toast Ale. Um, best wishes in uh, starting and growing your business. So thank you, Louisa, the last word about what's happening next week. So we're working on a campaign in the lead up to COP26 next year to connect food and the way food is produced with climate change and biodiversity loss um, and celebrate those po the positive changes that many businesses in, including the B Corp community are taking. Uh, we'll launch that campaign on Wednesday and then we have a series of beers that will help to tell the story. The first is with B Corp uh, Divine Chocolate that we are releasing um, next week. We're, they will be fun, they will be delicious um, because we also say to change the world you have to throw a better party than those destroying it. Living proof that business can change the world, no matter how small you are, you can make a difference. And uh, more power to everybody on this for this call that's uh, starting their business with the ambitions that you can succeed. Uh, good luck, and thank you very much for uh, watching in. Thank you.